Hi and welcome back to a new video and today also a new episode of the viewer mail. Today on our table we have an RTX 3080 iChill from Inno3D which comes factory equipped with an alpha cool full cover water block. This card was sent to me by Mark and unfortunately Mark had some issues while setting up his uh, hard tube cooling loop and at some point apparently a hard tube came loose and some water was spilled across his 3080 and unfortunately it seems to be broken or damaged and we're trying to help him today to see if we can fix the 3080 and I'm not sure if we can fix it or if it's even broken but at least I will try to give you some feedback to see how you can debug a card to somehow kind of narrow it down which component on the card could be broken or to see which area of the card could be damaged. All right, let's see what we can get. Setting up a cloud server within about 10 seconds for only 2 euro 49 per month. That's what our long-term partner and data center operator Hetzner can provide and they have been on the market since 1997. Hourly based billing with very simple configuration using the Lucid web interface allows to set up your individual solution within a few minutes. Additional features such as load balancer, private networks or a CLI tool are also included. The entire server setup is developed in Germany and thus also GDPR compliant. No required minimum contract period the DDoS protection and unbeatable price performance ratio turned this into a perfect solution. Use the code DEBOWER21 to receive a starting credit of 20 euro valid for three months. Find out more in the link below. Okay, so here we have the card and the first thing to do obviously is a in visual inspection from the outside, just to check if there is any obvious physical damage before we do anything else. So first of all, obviously you would inspect the water cooler to make sure it's not leaking anything. I mean, in this case, it was a hard tube and it was not, not related to the water block itself. So we can kind of neglect that part. It's also closed, so it's not important that it's still filled with some of the blue liquid. What you should pay attention for is also the PCI Express slot, especially when it comes to water damage. It sometimes happens that some of the like tiny spills, whatever, they make their way into the PCI Express slot. And then it could happen that you have some damage on the PCI Express slot or if it dropped down, if it was like a shipment damage, whatever. Also always pay attention to the PCI Express slot. But in that case, it kind of looks fine. So the next step would be to open it up. Also, what is very important, if you have a card with like a possible water damage, then you should absolutely avoid to immediately put it back into a system to check if it works or not. If there is still some water sitting inside, I don't know where, like underneath a BGA or whatever, then this could possibly damage the card further. So absolutely avoid putting it back into the system if you know there could be water involved. That's why we first open it up and do further in a visual inspection. I just removed the backplate and on first look I couldn't find any obvious damage uh, to the backside of the card. Also no kind of strange residues on the back of the PCB. But inspecting the backplate you could see some residues of fluid on here and also on this position. And we know that the backplate goes on in that direction. Which means that the possible water spill was like in an area here or in an area up here. So it would take further caution to further inspect this area more in detail. And if we cannot find any res residues, you would still have to like in detail clean those areas up here. I'm not sure who is responsible for the thermal paste uh, application, if this was Mark or that is from factory because that, that is a lot, not even mad. Don't be fooled by those kind of residues on those memory chips because that could be related to some silicon residue of a thermal pad. But then if you look at the blue dot right here or like the blue residue on the thermal pad, also we can see some further blue residues on the cooling block right here and right here, which indicates that it definitely was leaking into the area of the VRM chips and also of the GPU, which is potentially an issue because it's very likely that some of the water went underneath the GPU or like underneath one of those memory chips and that could make it extremely difficult because getting the water out of there underneath is not that easy. And even if, if you would leave your car dry for like 24 hours, if it's underneath the GPU, it's very likely that the water will still sit under there. So the first important thing would be clean everything. For the next step, we want to find out if our GPU or the memory or the voltage supply of our memory or the GPU has a possible short. For that, we take our DMM and set the DMM 
to resistance measurement and now we first need to get our reference point for resistance measurement and the easiest is just to start at a point where you know for sure that it's ground and a very simple point for that is just using the ground points of our PCI Express connectors. On our card we know that the notch of the PCI Express connector is on the back which means that the top spots right here the top parts of our pin or the backside part of our pin are the ground connections. Now we first check the internal resistance of our DMM by checking with the second ground spot which is for example one of the mounting spots of the GPU or just use some part of the shielding from the HDMI or display port connector on the front. In our case we have 0.0, .0 ohm right here. And now we want to find out the state of our memory voltage supply and GPU voltage supply and in front area of the card we have two empty inductor spots and we take the measurement spots which are closer of the inductor to the GPU. In that case we can measure a resistance of 10 ohm which is definitely too much for the GPU resistance and this kind of indicates that it could be the memory voltage supply. But for memory voltage supply it's a rather high resistance, typically it's between 25 or 50 ohm and the top spot right here which is also empty measures 0.0, .0 ohm, that should be the GPU voltage. But 0, 0.0 ohm for GPU voltage that is rather low and could indicate that there is a possible short inside the VRM circuit for the GPU or that the GPU itself is somewhere short circuited. We're doing the same again on the back side to double check. You can see all those small MLCC caps on the back of the GPU and one side of those caps is always ground and the other side of those caps should be the GPU voltage. Again, we're taking the reference point of ground on the PCI Express connector and measure the resistance across the GPU First one side of the MLCC, then the other side of the MLCC and again on those measurement points we have 0 ohm on both sides, which is not a good indicator in our case. And now repeating the same for the memory, again take one of the bigger MLCCs behind one of the memory chips. One side would be ground, the other side would be the memory voltage. In this case we first had the memory voltage or the memory resistance which is 10 ohm and the other side would indicate 0 ohm. But again in this case we would know that the 10 ohm for sure is the memory internal resistance. Just for quick comparison we will double check the resistances on this RTX 3070 Strix because I know this one is working for sure and we will double check the values of the resistance on those caps on the back of the card, on those bigger ones right here and you can see this line right here and this line is indicating that it's uh, the positive voltage, like the GPU voltage. And for example, if we would compare that with those type of caps, like the solid caps, the marking right here would indicate the ground. Again, double checking resistance of the PCI Express connector ground to the value or the contact of our small cap on the back. And you can see it's a very low resistance, something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ohm, but it's exactly what we want to see and that's also indicating that the GPU is fine. Those very low um, resistances are very typical for GPUs, something between 0 0.2 and like 1.5 ohm. It's a very typical value and now we can move over to this cap on the memory, on the back of the memory. And yeah, this would be 25 ohm for the RTX 30. 70 Strix. For the actual cleaning process I can absolutely recommend something like cleaning petrol, I'm not sure what the actual translation of this stuff is, but something like acetone, but nothing which is water-based. Avoid anything that is water-based or like 70% uh, isopropanol, stuff like that I would absolutely avoid. Acetone is also fine. Ideally you would have some PCB cleaner stuff that would be perfect, but if you don't have that even acetone or some typical cleaner like this would do the job. I'm just pouring the cleaner over like the VRM area, also the GPU area, make sure that it can run uh, between the PCB and the GPU and like between the PCB and the VRM. That would be the most important part is if there's any kind of fluid still stuck under there. You can also see how beautiful it's cleaning off the thermal paste. We'll try it from multiple directions. Now using some pressurized air to clean everything from like underneath the uh, GPU and make sure 
that everything is dry, but I will do that outside simply because I don't want to have any of this cleaner here inside my room. And our final step, yeah, putting the GPU into the oven, set the temperature to 80 degrees Celsius because that is a temperature which is not dangerous for any components on the PCB itself, but it will be high enough to make sure that any kind of residues from like water or from the cleaner would vaporize. Now that the card is cooled down, we will repeat our resistance measurements. It is very important that you will have the same type of temperatures because if you have 20 degree room temperature at your initial measurement and then for example, after heating it up, at, it's sitting at 40 degrees Celsius, you will have different resistance values and that's what we want to avoid. But now we will double check resistance. First thing, check memory resistance. Should be again 10 ohms, yep, yeah, roughly. GPU resistance still about zero ohm. Ready for the next step, GPU block is attached with a new thermal paste application. No backplate because we will need access to the card probably later and yeah. So the card is attached via a riser cable to this test setup. It doesn't matter what kind of test setup we're using and then display cable attached and now we're trying to see if we can get an image or not. At least no explosion yet, that's a good sign. Not so good sign that it's stuck at 97. I can definitely feel some, some heat on the back, which is a good sign. Okay, let's investigate further. Now we're going to power it up again and check if the GPU voltage is applied and if the memory voltage is applied. We know already that there is some heat on the back, which is a good indicator, but we don't want to keep it on for too long, maybe like one or two minutes is fine. And just to double check the voltages. GPU voltage wise, we have 0 0.75 in the center, also on those bigger caps and let's check memory voltage. Memory voltage 1.37 is also good. So we know that the basic voltage rails are working, that is good. Unfortunately, we kind of have bad news for Mark because at this point there is not much left I can do because we checked that all the voltage rails are there and they are present. And at the point of detection on the mainboard, it kind of indicates that there is some issue with PCI Express or like the GPU itself because it's not even getting to the point where you could get display signal. That's why you can kind of neglect anything which would be in the front area regarding like the display port, display port connections or whatever. And we know that all the voltage rails are present, which is a good indicator and a good sign that the card itself is working, but then there is some signal issue. And that could be the GPU or the memory or anything like that is damaged, could be permanently broken, could also be that it needs BGA rework. But for BGA rework, I don't have the equipment and I don't have the skill to do that stuff here. Anyway, um, sorry Mark that we couldn't fix it, but maybe it can help you out there if you ever have some kind of water damage to your cart, then you should never ever put your cart back into the system unless you know that it's perfectly clean and dry. Because your cart can sit all day long inside water, as long as there is no power, then it should never be an issue. Maybe it can help you out there if you will ever encounter some kind of water spill on your card. All right, I still hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye bye.